Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be discussing a an indicator that historically has been useful for identifying market cycle tops. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've done um a couple videos on this in the past um the last one was probably many many months ago but basically the idea and we're going to keep this video relatively short um but basically the idea is that historically whenever the 200 week simple moving average crosses above bitcoin's prior all-time high the market cycle top is in okay so it's not a perfect indicator, okay? It's not. Sometimes it can be a little, you know, it, it lags. I'm not I'm not asking you to take this indicator to the bank. They're not going to cash it in. I can promise you that. But let's just go through and see what happened. So in the first peak, if you look at that and just simply draw a line from that peak over, and then you say, all right, well, the 200-week the SMA, this white line, crossed that peak right there, right there. That was really close to when the all-time high occurred. Let's get it exact. Right here on the line, right? Really close to when the all-time high occurred. Was it perfect? No. The all-time high was a week or two later. But in the sea of indicators, is it a bad one to keep in mind? No, right? Again, a lot of people want something that's going to tell them like the minute the top is in because people just want to sell everything at the top, you know, peace out for the bear market year, uh, which is normally the midterm year, 2014, 2018, 2022, potentially 2026. And that's it, right? That's what a lot of people want to do. But it gets you pretty close, right? It got, it got you pretty close. Now, if you do the same exercise and then draw a, a, a horizontal line from the 2013 high, and go all the way across, and then figure out when the 200-week SMA crossed that, you can see that it did a pretty good job of identifying the Bitcoin market cycle top, right? So that one was actually probably the most accurate, right? Pretty simple, right? Clear as mud. Now, the third time was not as accurate but it still was useful, right? Again, I'm not I'm not saying that you should take it to the bank. Again, I'm not. I'm just saying that in this case, was it a little late? Yes, by a few weeks, by a few weeks, okay? But in the grand scheme of things, you know, if you only ever use this indicator, right? Like if all you ever did was buy Bitcoin whenever it's like, you know, at the 200 week moving average and then sell it or below it, right? And then sell it whenever the 200 week estimate crosses the prior all time high, you're doing pretty good, right? You're not, you know, technically last cycle, you would have sold your Bitcoin at like 51K instead of 69. But, you know, you still avoided a good part of the bear market. Am I suggesting this is the only indicator you should use? No. If the trend continues, then this cycle, the top might occur a month or two before the price or before the 200 week crosses the prior all time high. And the reason I say that is because the first one occurred about a week or two before the next one occurred basically at that time. The third one occurred a, a couple of weeks after about three to four weeks after it happened. And so maybe this one occurs two weeks, or sorry, two months after, or sorry, the, 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 the all-time high might occur about one to two months before this actually happens. As of right now, you can see there's a little ways to go. The 200-week SMA is only at around $48,715, okay? The prior all-time high is around 69 k So the 200-week moving average is around $20,000 away from crossing the prior all-time high. Now, we can't really extrapolate moving averages too far because, again, they're based on also future price action. Uh, but if we were to just extend this line um, like this, you can actually see it starting to curl up to the upside a little bit. If we were extend it like this, 
you would see it would actually go all the way out into 2026. But it's probably not going to take that long. Um, you know, with it starting to accelerate here a little bit, right, in the short term, if we get this slope here, you can see that it'll occur even sooner. And so what I'm saying is that there is a decent chance that the all time high for the market cycle top, there's a decent chance the all time high will occur in 2025. You just need to be aware that whenever the 200 week SMA crosses the prior all time high, the top is probably in. That doesn't mean it's going, it doesn't mean you should wait for the 200 week SMA to cross that level uh, in order to, to take action. What I'm simply saying is that is what history would suggest is that whenever the 200 week moving average crosses above this level here, there's a good chance the market cycle top is in. I don't know exactly when it's going to occur, and it could play out a number of different ways, right? I mean, you know, there's there's multiple ways this could play out. We've talked about potentially a, a pullback in August, September. That doesn't mean that that price can't do well between now and then. You could always see Bitcoin do what it did the last couple of years, where it just simply stalls out uh, in the summer. Like, it doesn't mean it can't go up. We've seen new cycle highs uh, in 2023, even in the summer. It just means that, you know, you might have have some some similar type of pattern like we had the last couple of years where you have a pullback in the third quarter of the year. So it's possible that happens. But I, I don't want people to go into this super deterministic because, you know, there's always a chance that we break out here and then the Q3 pullback might just be a pullback to say this level, right? If, if it explodes through it and then comes back down to it and then maybe find support and then gets one final push. That's also possible. I just want people to realize that regardless, regardless of which way Bitcoin goes here, if it if it sort of like tops out and then maybe gets a pullback into Q3 like it did the last couple of years, if it does that approach, you're still likely going to have another move back up in a, a, a couple months later, kind of like the last two years. If it just goes through here, you might have a pullback but you probably would still be at the same price a little later this year, regardless of the path, right? Whether it's down, whether it's up and then down or down and then up, okay? You probably could very well be at the same price in October, regardless of, of the direction. So the point is, though, as I've said before, no one knows, no one has their crystal ball. Um, Bitcoin dominance all the way, right? I mean, I, I have Bitcoin dominance probably going to go up. You're probably better off with Bitcoin than most everything else. Um, is there a place in a portfolio for Ethereum at this point, considering it went home? I would say so. Does that mean Ethereum can't go down? It absolutely could. But if Ethereum goes back down and sweeps the low from a few months ago, it has to be because Bitcoin got rejected here. Okay, so, you know, it, it just simply could be um, that would be the reason. All right. So that's where I am right now. This is an indicator that I just wanted to communicate with people about. Look, I, I made a tweet about it. It I sort of nonchalantly tweeted about it and then I went to sleep and then it it actually got a lot more attention than I thought it was going to. Um, and of course, everyone's criticizing it like they usually do. But that's fine. And so I just wanted to go through the nuances of it again. Um, so if you wait for this indicator to play out, right, if you wait for the two and a week estimate across prior all time high, in order to try to time the top, you're probably too late. At this point, though, the 200 week estimate is still about $20,000 away from the prior all time high, which is still going to take many, many, many months for that to play out, right? It could take a long time. And again, it's it's impossible to know because it, it also depends on price action um, in the future. So we can't, you know, we can't really extrapolate it out, obviously, given that it's a 200 week moving average. It's not like any given week, any individual week is going to have a huge effect. But you can see there are, you know, there's some, sometimes there's slight variations in the slope, right? Like, how do you extrapolate the slope here to say, when would the tuna week estimate reach, um, say, like, you know, $33,000, you would have said September 2024, but it actually reached it in March, half a year sooner. If you then took this slope to project out, when would the tuna week estimate hit, say, uh, you know, 50K? You would have said, all right, well, it would have taken until March 2025 
Um, but it actually took it, it actually took it until it really hasn't even hit it yet, right? And we're already in June. So again, there are some dangers with extrapolating a moving average because it's dependent on future price action, which we can't possibly know, right? So those are my views. Uh, just a, a market cycle top indicator to just keep in the back of your mind in case it plays out later this year. Not asking you to take it to the bank, nothing like that. Just keep it in the back of your mind in case it comes in handy later on this year. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.